The process of using bubbles to emulsify bones and meat to create a milky broth isn't limited to beef, pork, or poultry. You can have the same results using fish. The great part about this is that since fish is so delicate, what can sometimes take days with pork will only take you an hour or so with fish if you keep your preparation simple. The trick is to fry your fish first. Frying will remove some of the oils from the fish, which results in a less pungent broth. It'll also cook the meat, which turns it white. The meat and cartilage will soften as a result and almost gives your broth a sweeter taste. If you allow the oil to drain or pat the fried fish with a towel before boiling, you'll keep the oil retained from frying to a minimum. A little will be fine, as the broth is significantly less fatty than that used by pork, chicken, or beef. If you're not a fan of any fishy aroma, this probably isn't the broth for you. But I will say that this is surprisingly one of the most versatile soup bases we have. In this video, I'm only flavoring my broth with a little ginger and salt, straining it all at the end and then boiling some sweet lotus roots in the broth afterwards. But some popular variations include adding green onions and winter melon, or one I particularly like is sweet potato and tomato. Traditionally, this soup is used as a staple food for women who are recovering after childbirth. It's light and flavorful without being too heavy, but add enough vegetables into it like bok choy and you'll find yourself quite satiated. The fish that you use doesn't have to be fancy. Here I use tilapia, which I picked out live from the Chinese market. If you have that option, getting your fish live is the best since minimizing the time it takes to get into the pot also minimizes the pungency of the fish. If you can't get a live fish, ask your fishmonger for a bag of ice to carry the fish so that it stays as fresh as possible before you can cook it. Another thing to know is that large, meaty, or fancy fish won't make a difference here. You're not keeping anything but the broth since you're going to be boiling the heck out of everything anyway. All the goodness will be in the broth by the time you're done, so when it comes to it, just go small, go bony, go cheap, and go fresh. If you know anything about fish, you'll know that carnivorous fish, fish that eat other fish, have higher concentrations of mercury in them. And since you're extracting everything you can into a broth, that might be something you will have to think about. So look up the fish that you're buying. If they feed on plants and krill, they're going to be your safest bet. This is another reason why smaller fish are great for this broth, because the smaller they are, the smaller their food will be. They'll tend to be safer to eat this way. For this reason, I'd personally never consider tuna or swordfish as an option for soup. There's not much in the case of steps here. Heat your oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and fry the fish until it's fully cooked. Allow as much of the frying oil to drain off as you can and place into a pot of forcefully boiling water. Allow the water to come back to a rolling boil and cook for at least 15 minutes or until the broth has attained the level of milkiness that you prefer. It won't be the same as pork broth, but it will be substantial. When the fish is done, remove it from the pot and add your vegetables and season your broth to taste. Again, try a couple of large chunks of sweet potato and tomato to this. It's really good. What will result is a creamy white broth that is light and pleasantly fishy, in a sweet way, kind of like dashi. 